Welcome to Electron Line. What if you want to consider any point between any two load points and you want to calculate the forces in the x to y direction, the moments about that point, how would you do that? Turns out it makes no difference. Again, note here that the force between any two load points is always going to be constant. Therefore, the tension pulling at P4, which is between the two load points P1 and P4, uh, P2, would be exactly the same as the tension you experienced at P1. The tension between P1 and P2 does not change. It's constant, both for the X and the Y components. So let's find the sum of the forces in the X direction in a situation like this. All the forces in the X direction, you can see that we have an A sub X here, and we have a T sub X. A sub X is pointing in the negative direction, T sub X is pointing in the positive direction. So we can say that minus A sub X plus T sub X must add up to zero. And from that, we can conclude that A sub X must equal T sub X. You can see that's the exact same result we got in the previous video. So it doesn't matter if we consider a point between these two load points or the point P1. You get the exact same equation when you sum up all the forces in the X direction. Let's now sum up all the forces in the Y direction. We have an A sub Y in the positive direction, A sub Y. We have a negative F sub 1, and we have a negative T sub Y. And then if we solve this equation for A sub Y, we get A sub Y, that is the reactionary force in the Y direction, in the vertical direction at the support point A, has to be equal to F sub 1 plus T sub Y. And again, that's the exact same equation we got in the previous video. Again, it makes no difference at all to calculate these forces and relate these forces to one another. Again, that shows that the tension in between P1 and P2 is exactly the same as the tension at P1 due to this cable section and at P2 due, due to that cable section. Finally, what we're going to do now is we're going to find the moment about P4, about this particular point which means it eliminates the tension in this cable because the cable goes right through that pivot point and therefore those are eliminated in this calculation. We know that they must add up to zero, so therefore this equals. And let me go over here because I think I'm going to need a little bit more room. Let's consider A sub X. It's pointing in this direction. It causes a counterclockwise torque or moment, therefore that's a positive moment. So we have A sub X times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point that would be this distance Y. So A sub X times Y. Let's consider A sub Y. That will cause it to have a negative moment because it's a clockwise direction. That so becomes minus A sub Y and the distance from the line of action of that force to the pivot point would be the distance x right here. Next we want to consider the load force F1. It is pulling in this direction causing a counterclockwise torque about point P4. That means it is positive plus F1 and the distance. Well notice that this distance is x1, this distance is x, so it would be x minus x1 gives us this distance right here. It would be x minus x1. And is there any other force acting here? No, it's not these force. The tension here acts on this particular point, so we don't have to consider that. So these added together add up to zero, which means that if we want to solve this for F1, we can say that F1 is equal to, bringing this over to the other side of the equal sign that gives us A sub Y, that now becomes positive times x minus, this becomes negative, a sub x times y, and then we have to divide the whole thing by the coefficient of f1, which is x minus x1. And so you can see that, again, using these three equations, the sum of all the force in the x direction, the sum of all the force in the y direction, and the sum of the moments about any point is going to give you all the various components. Of course, you'll have to solve those equations simultaneously to slowly analyze and calculate and compute all the forces acting on all the various points on a cable like that that has concentrated loads. And that's how it's done.